Hello, Math Study students. Welcome to another online lesson. Today's lesson is going to be covering a new topic on logic. So it may not seem very mathy, but uh, we're going to make logic into a math topic here for our IB Math Studies course. Our learning intentions are vast, and we are going to involve uh, discussing lots of terms and notation involving uh, basic uh, logic statements, specifically identifying what a proposition is, creating negations for those propositions, um, identifying, creating, and classifying compound propositions, and knowing the difference between inclusive and uh, exclusive disjunctions. All right, so without further ado, we'll move on. I had mentioned in class last time that we uh, would have a new assignment regarding the project, and I'm going to hold off on that for just one more class because there's enough in this video without me talking about it. If you want to start writing your survey, go for it. I recommend uh, three to five questions for the survey, um, but otherwise, um, uh, I will talk more about that next video. So we're beginning this new chapter on symbolic logic, and I wanted to give you a little bit of a background to sort of bring some internationalism as well as some theory of knowledge into this uh, discussion. The study involves changing words to mathematical symbols, thus symbolic logic, and applying rules of deduction, which is sort of like problem solving, to these. Uh, mathematical logic was originally suggested by G.W. Leibniz, and he lived uh, 14, uh, 1646 to 1716. If you think about like Columbus and when he did his sailing, uh, this puts this in context in that, you know, this is uh, not super recent mathematics, but it's also not that old either. And most of the symbolism that we're talking about is uh, invented by George Boole, which is maybe 150 years old at best, which is quite recent as far as mathematics go. So a little background there for you. Um, so our terms and notation for today, we're going to start with what's known as a proposition. Propositions are statements which may be true or false. It's as simple as that. It is sunny today. It's a statement. It could be true or false. Um, I am happy. Again, a statement. It may be true or it may be false. We use lowercase letters like variables to represent propositions. But again, lowercase letters, not capital, lowercase letters. So examples of propositions. Here is a proposition. I've labeled it using a lowercase p, and I'm saying there is no school today. Again, that's a statement that may be true or may be false. You can also make mathematical statements. They don't have to be written in English. Here I have a statement that says 4 plus 7 equals 11. Um, and again, I'm using a lowercase letter to represent that. A proposition is said to... Uh, is said to be indeterminate if there is no common answer. Um, so an example of that would be uh, math is hard. For some students, we struggle with it more. Others, we struggle with it less. And so depending on who you asked, you would not get the same answer. Whereas if I said, you know, what day of the week is today, you know, or uh, I don't know when you're watching this, but let's say it's Sunday, and I say today is Sunday, that is agreed upon by everyone because it's Sunday for all of us. Um, negation. Well, we've done lots of negations this year. Usually we refer to them as the complement. That's the same idea here. We have a symbol that looks sort of like a negative sign, which is not, which is the opposite of. And so we're, we're basing it on those math symbols. But again, this is uh, like a negative sign, but then it's got a little hook at the end. That hook should not be longer than the sign itself. Otherwise, you start to look like a 7. And I would mark that wrong on a test. We don't want a 7, and we also don't want a negative sign. That's not appropriate either. We want the negation symbol, which is based on a negative sign, but not the same thing. And so the negation of P would be there is school today. It's the opposite. It's the complement, if you will. And the negation of Q is 4 plus 7 that does not equal 11. And in this case, the negation of 4 plus 7 uh, equals 11 is false. This right here is a false statement because 4 plus 7 does equal 11. The original proposition was a true statement.
So here I have a bunch of propositions. I'm going to go through a few of these, and we're going to first identify whether or not it's a proposition. And if so, we'll state it as true, false, or indeterminate. And then write its negation. So to start with, sheep have four legs. Is it a statement? Yes. Can it be true or false? Yes. Um, so we know it is a proposition. Now, is it true? I would say by nature, generally, yes, that's a true statement. I know there's possibilities that it could be something else. And then what would the negation be? Usually adding the word not will get the job done. So sheep do not have four legs. And generally, that is not a true statement. So I would say our original statement was true. Our original proposition was true, and our negation was false. Uh, do cows have four legs? Number two. That is not a statement, so it is not a proposition. Done. Alicia is good at mathematics. Um, that is definitely a proposition. I might argue that is indeterminate because we don't know anything about Alicia. And, uh, you know, based on that, I would call it indeterminate. The... Negation of that would be Alicia is not good at mathematics. This one's interesting. I think my favorite team will win. Um, is it a statement? Yes. It's saying it's not the winning that is this the statement part of it. It's the thinking. I am thinking that my favorite team will win. And so the negation of that is I think my favorite team will not win. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Let's try that again. I do not think my favorite team will win. That would be the negation. Again, the verb that we have here is think, and that's what you need to uh, negate. Um, so those are some examples. Um, I'm going to move down to this guy right here. Uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Very uh, famous mathematical equation known as, think of it, think of it, have it in your head. Okay, that's the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so it's a mathematical statement. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, it's a proposition for sure. The negation would be A squared plus B squared does not equal C squared. Now, is the proposition true, false, or indeterminate? The answer is indeterminate. Why is that indeterminate? I thought a squared plus b squared always equals c squared. That only works if we have right triangles. So if I don't know if we're talking about a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared would not equal c squared. So those are propositions. Now, just like in English class when you have a statement, you can make compound statements or compound sentences. And we can do that here with our propositions as well. Compound propositions. Statements which are formed using connectives such as and, and or. Now, in um, English class, you have the word conjunction, and that means and, or, or but. Now, when we write in English, we can use the but, which implies and. Um, I played baseball today, and my team lost. Two statements, exactly with and. I played baseball today. But my team lost. It's still saying I played baseball. It's still saying my team lost. And and but are interchangeable. So if you see but written in uh, a statement, again, we're talking about the same meaning as and, and the same symbol would be used. But for our actual symbols, we don't have one specifically for but. It's the same thing as and. So a conjunction is a compound proposition formed by joining two propositions using and specifically. And the and symbol is very much like the logic, I'm sorry, the, the probability and symbol or intersect, except instead of being rounded, it's pointed, more like an upside down V rather than an upside down U. And uh, that's the conjunction symbol. We'll usually not refer to it as a conjunction symbol. We'll usually just say that's the and symbol. And then we have disjunction. And disjunction is very much like or. We're combining two statements using or. And this time, Unlike probability, instead of using the U, we flip it again, just like, but this time we're using this V sort of looking symbol. It's not a V, it's an OR symbol or a disjunction. The inclusive, we use this symbol here, which is just like the OR we had in uh, probability, which says one, the other, or both. It's inclusive. It takes one, it takes the other, or it takes both. We also have something known as 
exclusive disjunction. And that's true when we only have one or the other, but not both. I've used the analogy before. If I were to say, are you taking an English or a math class? And people would say yes. And some people are just taking English, and some people might just be taking math, and some people are taking both. But they would say, yes, I'm taking English or math. Whereas if I was going to take a trip somewhere, and I'd say, would you like to visit the East Coast or the West Coast? I don't mean that we're going to go to both. We're going to go to one or we're going to go to the other. When I'm only talking one or the other, that's what we call exclusive disjunction. Exclusive. Think about an exclusive club. They don't let everybody in. They're not taking any option. It's just one or the other, but not both. And to symbolize that, we use the or symbol again, which is that V, but this time we underline it. And that means one or the other, but not both. So I'll write some of these, and then others I'm just going to read. P, it's a proposition. It is raining. Q, it is cold. Write down the meaning of each of these. So you can pause this and think about these for a minute. And then I will start writing. So the first one, it is raining. Then I have this symbol, which means and it is cold. Compound sentence, I should use a comma because I have two different uh, independent clause, each with their own uh, subject and, and verbs and all that good stuff. So that would be the appropriate way to do that. Now, if you wanted to combine the uh, subject and just say it is raining and cold, I could live with that. I wouldn't recommend it. I think the easiest thing for these math tests is just copy the, the phrases down, use appropriate notation. Should we have capitalization at the beginning? Absolutely. Should we have punctuation at the end? Absolutely. If we don't on a test, will I mark it wrong? Absolutely. You must write full sentences um, just like you would for any other class. The next one's going to be the same thing, except this time they reverse the letters. So our propositions are in the opposite order. It is cold or it is raining. Now we've got the or symbol once again, but this time it's underlined. So the way we would write this, we have to add some extra words. We would say it, again, P is first this time, so it is raining. Order does matter. Or it is cold. But not both. Do we have to add the but not both? Yes. That's what the underlying part means. It means but not both. Now, some students say, could I just write, it is either raining or it is cold. Yeah, I, I think that's a decent way to say it, but no, don't, don't do that. Uh, it is either raining or it is cold, but not both. If you want to add the word either in, I'm fine with that. But you still have to say but not both. Um, we want to be as specific as possible. Um, now we get to uh, our negation symbol. So for this one, it would be it is uh, not raining and it is cold. For number five, we would have it is not cold or it is not raining, but not both. Because, again, it's underlined there. And for the last one, the technical way of writing this would say it is not not cold. But two negatives make a positive, so you could literally just say it is cold for number six. So that's taking the symbolic logic and writing words or translating the words here. And then in this one, um, oh, we're not doing that one. So we're going to finish with that. Um, so, but the other thing I was going to say is that we want to be able to translate back to um, from the, the words to the symbols if we need to. Uh, and we'll take a look at that at our next worksheet. So key concepts from today. We have our terminology, meaning our uh, propositions. We need to know how to abbreviate them with lowercase letters. 
We can negate them using our symbol that is a negation symbol but looks kind of like a negative sign. We also talked about compound propositions, uh, our conjunctions, which is the and, which we represent with the upside down V, as well as our disjunctions, which we represent with the regular looking V, both inclusive and exclusive. The exclusive is but not both and is underlined. And those were the main concepts. So we have some assignments on page 510. And uh, we will talk more about the project next time. And we'll see you in class.